Hi everyone, it's Dr. Wallace. I'm going to be doing a asynchronous day today. So we are going to do our lecture on the rest of objective two this way. All right, so last time We did a, a problem where we solved um, quadratic equation using the quadratic formula, right? So we solved ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero using quadratic formula. which says that x equals the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, right? So um, where does this thing come from? Where does quadratic formula come from? Well, uh, it turns out that um, there are other ways to solve quadratic equations that um, aren't so complicated to simplify, but they only work in certain situ situations. So. I told you something about this before, but um, note there's something called a square root property. So there we go. Uh, so there's something called square root property for uh, real numbers. What it says is if uh, a equals uh, a squared equals k for some k bigger than or equal to zero, then a is either plus the square root of k or minus the square root of k. Okay. Um, so for example, uh, you know, four is two squared. So, um, sorry, uh, oops, x, Or if I go x squared equals 4, then that has two solutions. So that means x is equal to 2 or minus 2, right? Now, you can do it for complex numbers as well. Um, we talked about complex numbers. So this is sort of a non-example because I said k was bigger than equal to 0. It's only because we don't want to use this square root symbol for negative numbers. but. Um, should say this is it extends to uh, you have things like x squared is equal to um, negative number uh, negative k or k bigger than bigger than zero. So that means you have a perfect square on one side and a, no, and a negative number on the other. Then that means that x is equal to plus or minus the square root of k, but with an i, right? OK, so there's that. And then there's another um, 
property called the zero factor property. And that says that um, if A times B is zero and A and B are real numbers or complex numbers, um, <clears throat> and that means that uh, A is B zero or B is zero. Okay, so if you have a product of two quantities and uh, their product turns out to be zero, then that means at least one of those factors had to have been zero, because that zero is the only thing that makes a product zero uh, in terms of real or complex numbers, okay? So like, oh, well, this has nothing to do with the quadratic formula, right? Uh, but it does. So, Notice that if AX squared plus BX plus C is zero, then I can rewrite this thing um, using something called completing the square. Then we can rewrite The left hand side uh, by completing the square so that it looks like. X plus B over 2A all squared equals negative 4AC plus B squared all over 2A squared. Now, I, I'm, I'm, I haven't done it, right? But there's a way to add and subtract the same numbers or quantities to both sides of this equation so that uh, you hear one side factors as exactly as a perfect square and the other side uh, looks like this. And so then taking this, using the square root property, which is like just, you take the square root of both sides, but then you gotta put a plus or minus, then you get the quadratic formula. So that's the square root properties use it, we're using there. Uh, the zero factor property is really um, useful when uh, it, it actually factors and this other side, uh, you know, is zero. So, so for example, um, I'm gonna keep, complete the square one time so you can see how it works and then i'm going to show you that there are other ways to solve these equations not using <clears throat> the quadratic formula or completing the square uh we got 2x squared minus six X plus 13 equals zero, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, if you're in doubt, if you have no idea how to do a problem um, in our class, right? Generally, you can get an approximate answer, anything by um, graphing uh, both sides, like I showed you in class. <coughs> Here, um, I'm going to complete the square. So what does that mean? Well, first I'm going to um, 
bring the I'm going to bring the 13 to the other side. And I'm going to factor out this 2. OK. Then I'm going to leave some space. The one I'm going to put inside, so X squared minus 3x, and then I, I don't know what goes here yet, okay? Negative 13 goes there, all right? Now, uh, I want the thing in these parentheses to be a perfect square. What does that mean? That just means that when I foil it out, I get x squared minus 3x, uh, and then, oops, I didn't want to do that. Uh, x square minus 3x, but then the only way to do, uh, to have something be a perfect square that has a 3x right there, negative 3x, is if this is uh, half of this number squared. So 9 fourths. Oops, no, that's not right. Right here, the, the number is half. Okay. But if I FOIL this out, I get x squared, then x times negative 3 over 2, and then negative 3 over 2 times x, which comes out to negative 3x. And then the last term is 9 fourths. OK, now notice when I put a 9 fourths here, it's multiplied by 2 because I factor this 2 out. <laughs> so really, what did I do on this side? I added 9 fourths times 2. So since I added the same number on both sides, I still get e uh, equality. I have so the 2 there and now I have negative 13 uh, plus 9 over 4 times 2 is 9 over 2. OK. And now uh, I've got a perfect square on one side, so I'm going to divide both sides by 2 to get it by itself. OK, and then I can use the square root property. If I take the square root of both sides. Get a plus or minus. And. In the end, uh, why did I do that? Because square root property says that the thing on this side is no longer squared. OK, and add. Three halves to both sides. And I have. My solution, OK, it's not simplified, obviously, but. Um, we can go ahead and do that if you want. What you notice is that if I were to simplify this, this would exactly be the opposite of B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. OK. But that would give me the answer. And then. If you want, we could uh, put into our calculator to see what the answers are. Maybe. Except negative 13 plus 9 halves is a negative number. OK, what ends up happening here is the this uh, this equation doesn't have any real answers. Right, because negative 13. Plus. 
nine halves, which is four and a half, is negative eight and a half divided by two is still a negative number, right? And as a fraction, it's uh, 17 fourths. So if I were to rewrite this, this would be three halves plus or minus the square root of 17 over the square root of four with an I, right? So that is really simplified like that. OK. All right, so here's the deal. Um, if you have to solve an equation like this and you don't know what to do, it's already written this way, you might as well use the quadratic formula, OK? or your calculator to find the answer. Um, but in some cases, you can you can do it uh, faster. So So this is saying find all the solutions, even if they're imaginary, OK? Um, and give exact answers, I guess. So in this problem, I definitely don't want you to use your calculator. <clears throat> X squared plus 3X minus 4 equals 0. B, negative 5, X squared minus 30X equals 0. C, 2x squared plus 20x plus 54 okay, equals the quantity x plus 7 squared. OK, that's complicated. And the last one, 3 times x plus oh, x minus 7. Squared minus 29 equals zero. All right, there's a bunch of possible uh, things to do, this one. Now, for part A, we could go ahead and uh, do the quadratic formula here. It's already set up for that, but there's a faster way, okay? I can find, I can do what's called factor this. So the zero factor property that I wrote up here says if we can rewrite the thing so that we have something times something else equals zero, then we just let the two somethings be zero. And in in fact, what the, what that you get is if it works, you'll get two easy to solve linear equations rather than one not as easy to solve quadratic one okay so how does this work well if i were to foil out and get x squared right and what would the first two terms have to be uh these there's no guessing here this has to be an x and that has to be next because those guys here would have to multiply to x squared now what goes here needs to multiply to negative four, but add up to three. And there's a bunch of, uh, you know, um, methods that you could go over where it's basically just the illusion that what you're doing is not guess and check, but really it's guess and check, okay? Four only has so many factors, four, one, two, and two, or four, one, and two. OK. Plus or minus, you know, the, the only the only thing that works here is if it's plus four and minus one, then when I foil this out, they multiply to negative four, but add to three. And so this whole problem has turned out to be. Only one real one line, right? So if X plus four, the quantity times X minus one is zero, then X plus four is zero, and so x is negative four. If x minus one is zero, then x 
is one. So, so X is either negative four or one. That's the solution set. All right. Very similar thing happens here. Okay. So notice that negative five X is a factor of both terms. So this one factors uh, in a way that is even easier than the first one was, right? Because we're doing the anti-distributed -dist property sort of the, the most obvious way, right? Negative five X is both a factor of the first and second term. And so when I factor it out, it looks like this. And so this means negative 5x is 0, then x is 0. And this means that x plus 6 is 0, uh, which means x is negative 6. So the solution set is negative 6 or 0. All right. Moving on. The next one, it looks like we should be able to, so let me rewrite it. 2x squared plus 20x plus 54 equals x plus 7 all squared. It looks like we could just take the square to both sides, right? Wrong. That's not going to work here because we have a uh, perfect square on one side. That's great. We don't have a number on the other side. We have something with x's. So the only thing we can do here is hope that when we foil everything out and bring uh, everything to one side, it will factor. If not, then we have to use the quadratic formula. So what if foil out? x plus 7 all squared, you get x squared plus 14x plus 49. Subtract that whole side uh, negative, so you subtract x squared from both sides. x two x squared minus x squared is just x squared. Subtract 14x from both sides, so you get negative 12x. Subtract 49 from both sides, you get 5. Okay, now this doesn't factor, right? So the, the multiples of five or the factors of five are only one and five and they don't add up to negative 12, okay? So here you have to use the quadratic formula. So we get X equals the opposite of B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus four AC. Two a, and so we get twelve over two, plus or minus one forty four minus twenty is square root of one twenty four over two. And let's see, does one twenty four have a? Okay. So it's divisible by four. So we get 12 over two plus or minus two root 31 over two. And so the final answer is six plus root 31 and then six minus root 31. Okay. And what's the last one? So this last one is uh, a problem where we want to use the, the square root property, okay? Sure, we can file everything out and use the quadratic formula, but it's faster because look, we can solve for the x squared, the x minus seven all squared easily without introducing any uh, variables outside that uh, perfect square. So if I add 29 to both sides and then divide by three, now I have x minus 7 all squared equals a number. It's a positive number, in fact. 
So if I take the square root of both sides, I'm still getting a real number. And so the solution simplified is seven plus or minus the square root of 29 all over, uh, in, over three on the inside there. Okay. Now, um, the last thing I wanna tell you about in this section is something called the discriminant. And I, I, I already wrote this in, in your, uh, in class, I already talked about this in class. <clears throat> but I wanna reiterate it. Okay, if we let AX squared plus BX plus C equals zero, then there are three cases. Either the discriminant, which is uh, b squared minus four ac. That's the that's the formula for it, right? It's the thing inside the square root of the quadratic formula. So b squared minus four ac. If it is positive, okay. And then we've got if it is zero and then we've got if it is negative if it's positive then then there are two solutions to the two real solutions to the the equation given by the form, quadratic formula okay here there's one real solution and it turns out that the uh, this become this is a perfect square, okay, and then this is no real solutions. All right, and this is this uh, exactly mimics the three possible. Um, pictures that can arise. So if say D is B squared minus four AC and uh, D is greater than zero, then if I were to graph AX squared plus BX plus C, right, I would get one of two pictures. I get something like this maybe, or something like this. So the graph of y equals ax squared plus bx plus c will cross the x-axis twice. If it's equal to zero, then the vertex or the lowest point is actually on the x-axis, or you could have, say, it opening down and it so it just touches right there, okay? That's y equals ax squared, okay? And if it's negative, then either the vertex is above the x-axis and it opens up, or it's below the x-axis and opens down, you see? Those are the possible reasons for this uh, theorem. So if we were to if we were to complete the square, right, you know, we would see that the discriminant thing will tell us how many answers there are because of the quadratic formula. Um, and if it's positive, you get two answers like over here, right? We had plus or minus, right? If it's negative, we would get something like up here, right? You get plus or minus, so imaginary numbers. So that's zero, there's no real numbers, no real solutions, so two imaginary solutions. 
OK, and so just in practice, right? If you're asked to do this. Uh, determine the number of real solutions. And we got 8x squared plus x minus 1 is 0. We got 2x squared minus 6x plus 13 is 0. And C, and I think we already did that one, right? We already know what the answer is there. x squared plus 6x plus 9 is 0. Okay, so. Just going to do this out. So here D is B squared minus 4AC, and that's 1 plus 32. That's greater than 0, so two, two solutions. Here. The discriminant is negative six, the quantity squared minus four times two times 13, which is 36 minus um, 39 times two. So that's negative, right? That's no real solutions. So it would be no real solutions, but there would be two complex solutions. Okay, and here D is uh, 6 squared minus 4 times AC. That's 36 minus 36, so that's 0. So notice that if I were to factor this guy, this would be x uh, plus 3 all squared, so there would be exactly one answer. x, x equals negative 3 would be the only answer there. Uh, one solution, OK? All right, uh, I'm going to stop here now. We're probably going to have another asynchronous uh, day. Um, or uh, Wednesday's class meeting, so I'll make another video and you can look at it on D2L. Bye y'all.